Who's your bounce back? Um, my bounce back this year would be it's, it's honestly it's going to be Penn State. I think they went like seven and six last year. Um, they return Sean Clifford comes back. I guess they lose Jahan Dotson, but Penn State. It, it goes back to the point I said earlier. What Penn mm-hmm. State do you get? They're never at a lack of talent. They always have talent. I think for the last couple of years, they've always finished one of the top two recruiting classes in the Big Ten outside mm-hmm. of Ohio State. Franklin's known as a recruiter, man. Right. He gets talent. It's just what product do they get on the field? And I think um, just based upon their schedule this year, like as, I, as I'm looking at it, hold on, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. I think it um it could be something where you're like, all right, because you know they play Ohio State tough. So, you know, they open up with Purdue, then it's Ohio, then it's Auburn. Um, and we don't know which Auburn team you're going to get, but it's at it's at them. Then you get Central Michigan, Northwestern, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio State. Then you finish with Indiana, Maryland, Rutgers, Michigan State. So I think, you know, it just comes down to the day, which Penn State are we getting? Because Penn State could be that team that's talented enough that you're like, dang, they're going into the final weekend of the season like 11 and 11-1 11 and one or 10-1. and one fighting for a chance to play in the Big Ten title game, or you get this big you know, Penn State team that's like, man, they're fighting to be bowl eligible. I mean, we saw the nine overtime game they had last year with Illinois, and you're like, what the heck is going on here? So I think – but that's kind of noticeable for Penn State. Like they have the off year, then they bounce back. Because I think about right before Saquon's mm-hmm. breakout year. The year before, they were like 7-6 right. and six or – Eight and five or something like that. And then the next year, I think what Saquon's year, they go yes. like, yeah, like he breaks out and has an. Incre- so I think they're just due for it's kind of the James Frank and Franklin deal, and now with the big massive contract, like he's not going anywhere. So I think I say Penn State, man. I think they'll at least be competing um, to represent the Big Ten in the Big Ten championship game. Not saying they'll be there, but I think they bounce back where they make it competitive, and maybe, maybe just maybe they um, they upset Ooh. Ohio State this year. That that's a potential hot take there. Um, I'm going Illinois as my bounce back team. Um, Bielema, Bielema in his second year. Um, let's see. I think they finished five and seven last year. Much improved mm-hmm. defense. Offensively, they just couldn't get anything together. I think if you watch that Week Zero game when they played Nebraska, wasn't it? Yep, they you, played Nebraska. You saw yep. that that now they won that game, um, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, because we talked about that one on the pod. I think so. Um, <laughs> but did. then they went on to lose like their next three or four games in a row, and their offense was just horrendous. Yep. Not that it was great against Nebraska. So what did Bielema do? He went out and hired a new offensive coordinator who was a former assistant mm. under him at Arkansas by the name of Barry Lunny Jr., who was the offensive oh. coordinator last year at the history-making UTSA. So, Lunny followed hmm. Trailer to UTSA. They had one of the most dynamic top offenses in the country last year. Went 12-2, and two, broke, set all kinds of school records for, for UTSA. I mean, you remember, we talked about them on the pod. We, they got in the, they got in the top about them 25. A they were ranked. And that offense was, I mean, at times unstoppable, great particularly in their conference. But um, mm-hmm. so so he's now with Bielema. He runs a very um, – he runs a tempo. Uh, it's a balanced offense. I mean, they like at UTSA, they had, they had a dual-threat quarterback, so I think they had a 1,500-yard rusher. They almost had 3,000-yard receivers – you know those so so, so those of oh, you that are goodness. used to Bielema's like Wisconsin offenses and even some of his offenses mm-hmm. in Arkansas, he sort of expanded from that. He's okay with spreading it out, running some tempo, but I think the addition of Lunny with some of the guys they've got coming back will be enough for them to. If you look at their schedule, I don't think it's crazy to think Illinois could win eight or nine games, including the bowl game. Uh, I don't. I don't think. They can do yeah. much beyond that, but I think if their defense continues to improve like they did last year from the year before, and I'll, I'll say it this way, Bielema in year two, just going back to his time at Arkansas, he started his, his career at Arkansas going three and nine, and then the next season they were, they, they were bowl eligible, went seven and six, but what, what mm-hmm. you won't know about that season unless you're a fan like I was – they were about three points away from winning 10 games. 
I mean, they fumbled on the one and missed an extra point against Alabama that year and lost 14-13. They tanked one to A&M that they just gave them the game. Uh, that was the year, I believe, mm. they shut out LSU and Ole Miss in back-to-back games. I mean, it was a much improved team in year two. And so I expect that out of this Illinois team. Not saying they're going to go compete for a conference championship. I'm just saying I believe they bounce back. They're in a bowl game with a chance to win eight or nine games. I like that. I like that. That's believable. 